Will you, would you like to introduce David? Yes. Um, David, many of you know from Hill Dickinson, from his previous visits down here to Naples. Um, the subject matter of his talk is, I think, a very important one in a bad market. It's a very practical subject, and it's one that many people always ask their advisors about without necessarily completely understanding what it means. So hopefully some enlightenment here from David Pitlage uh, on the question of the continuing effectiveness of the Lian. Thank you very much, uh, Clive. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you also, Francesco, for uh, my third invitation to the conference. It's a, an absolute pleasure to be here and also, in, as people have remarked earlier, in such elegant surroundings. Just before I talk on my subject, which might not have the most arresting title, I was amused by Clive's uh, closing remarks, and I would just hasten to add I, I neither received nor wrote any of those messages, but as it's getting light in the, late in the day, and I think we could earn ourselves a bit of light relief. I think one of the fav my favorite messages I heard of came from a, a partner in another shipping firm too, I have to say, Mrs. Inson Co., when they were in Nolly's house, and it was the usual story about chasing for responses, and the, re the facts to the tribunal went, Dear Sirs, as I was walking past Nolly's house this morning, I saw uh, some scaffolding with a sign over saying, Men working overhead. If there is any truth in this sign, can Ince and Co. please respond to our letters of the 24th, 28th, and 31st? <laughs> anyway, um, that's a, an apologetic remark in some ways, because this is not, as I say, the most arresting title, uh, and as I stand between you, one more talk and the drinks, then I think I probably have to sell it to you in some ways. And I think that should be easy because although it's a, in some ways a dull lawyer subject, I think it's actually very relevant uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, what it gives you as a head owner in particular is the right to go beyond your charter uh, in the event of its failure to pay higher. Now, as speaking to operators and owners, I think we can, it's fair to say that one of the biggest problems we face um, is, or, or that owners have faced, is not necessarily their own liquidity, at least to start off with, but what seemed like good charter cover for long period charterers with seemingly bankable head charters going under. Uh, and the idea of being able relatively easily and cost-effectively to go behind that and gets what, gets, get what's coming in um, should be something that would be of interest to anybody, I think. Uh, consistent with that, and I think the, the analysis in the cases shows you that this is security. And it's good and, frankly, quite easily obtained security. It's not like having to negotiate a guarantee or anything like that. As we shall see... These rights come in standard form contracts. They're relatively easy and cost effective to exercise as long as you get um, the basics right. The underlying theories can be a little bit challenging. A further reason for looking at it now is that uh, perhaps unsurprisingly in the uh, current crisis, some of the old assumptions and the old principles of the cases have come before the English courts in the last couple of years. A further way in which I'd sell it to you is that you get a variety of targets. Again, as we shall see, you're, as the owner, you can not only leapfrog and see the subcharterer and call for those payments, sub freight certainly, sub hire perhaps. There is a chain, and you might get that. A related issue, that's the related issue in the title, is that you can probably also get bill of lading freight, and we shall see how the courts dealt with that very quickly. Uh, and again, look, as we'll, the way of optimizing your chances to make these recoveries, which you've got quite easily, are, as I say, relatively straightforward. So, very quickly, where do we find this? Um, I'll run through these. You're all familiar with this. The analysis and commentaries classically take the NYP 1946 foot clause 18. And we all know that the owners who have a lien on all sub-freights which facilitates this chain of assignments, as we shall see, for any amounts due under the Charter. The debate about any amounts and whether that includes damages, I, I, I won't deal with that one today, if you don't mind. 
The terminology you use, sub-freight, sub-hires, um, this has been considered recently. I don't think it's a dead issue yet. The standard forms, NYP 1946, just says sub-freight. If you want more than sub-freight, still, you've got to do more to get it. And that would go for what I've called the other sub-freight clauses. Ball time 39, gas time, liner time, intertank time, and bear con 89, but not 2001. As the contracts have evolved, and no surprises, the more modern standard forms you see, they take away the anguish about sub-hires and whether sub-freights include sub-hires. The tip, and it's an obvious one, if you're on one of the older forms, try to put in sub-hires, but we'll look at uh, wordings later. Um, in the offshore and salvage contracts, which I just put there because I know some of you are involved in this business, um, supply time does have a lien, but that's on cargoes and equipment, and rec hire and rec stage don't. But I think that's understandable because the nature of the business is actually different uh, and doesn't anticipate utilization by the charter or operator. If you read the cases, um, you'll see that there's been a lot of agony about how you classify this lien, and it's, uh, I'm sure you all deal with the concept of liens, and um, the obvious point is it cannot be a lien as such. You're talking about someone else's promise to pay your charterer at some later stage. You, know, you can't possess the money because the money hasn't been paid. Um, it's not the creature of a possessory right by contract, like the Leon on cargo, uh, nor does it arise in English law under basic principles, unlike, say, freight, general average, um, and the unpaid seller's right to pursue goods, in, to suspend goods in transit, or even shares, for that matter. Similarly, and I, I have Giorgio's paper uh, um, on Italian insolvency law earlier on, uh, there are suggestions that it arises due to its relationship with cargo, but it's not a maritime Leon or a statutory lien. So the two theories in English law have been competing for about 20 years, and I think it's now settled, although probably only recently, that the better way to look at this is as an equitable assignment. The charterer gives to the owner rights to recover under its subcontracts. The equitable part uh, makes it flexible. It means you have to give notice. I think this is a helpful characterization because it gives some tolerance in the notices, but I think it can um, present a potential trap in certain jurisdictions in England, for example, if there are registration requirements. And this was discussed by Christopher Clark in the Western Moscow case. So, sub-freights, again, a, an issue many of you will have dealt with. Um, bizarrely, in English law, we had two cases, the Cebu number one and the Cebu number two, coming to different reasons, uh, different views. It's been accepted recently in the Bulk Chile case um, that sub-freight does not include sub-hire. If you want something more than sub-freight, you have to say it. Interestingly, the, the judge, a very respected commercial court judge, Andrew Smith, said, had it not been for the fact that the Cebu number two case was later in time, and therefore binding on him as a precedent, he would have held that sub-freight includes sub-hire. Um, I'm involved in another case which is not come to the court yet, but I think that will probably go to the Court of Appeal. Briefly, then, on the bulk chili, as that's the most recent decision, let's just dwell on that, because that um, perhaps emphasizes the utility of the Liam. Um, it's very, I put this up here so you can see the chain, but it's, I accept, rather dull to go through them. The, the first two parties were essentially in the same camp. They were the owners. The real issue was what happens in the default of career lines um, to monies payable to career lines by Fayette, their uh, time trip charterers, from MetInvest to Fayette under a voyage charter, and also MetInvest as um, uh, shippers under a bill of lading. Notices were served on both Fayette and MetInvest. There was some controversy on those, um, but Notwithstanding the fact that Kore the Korea lines had actually registered their Korean insolvency as a foreign main proceeding, it was held that the owners could recover the bill of lading freight and the voyage charter freight. One of the issues there was that they were not 
payable at the date of the notice, but again, that's probably a little complex for this racing summary here. Um, a a sub-issue, which I think is, if we have more speakers, would be the right to be paid after you withdraw, um, and the owners were able to recover on that basis. So, running through this Leon, this valuable tool which we've easily acquired, it will cover sub-freight, perhaps sub-hire, and you can look down the chain that what was payable to uh, Fayette by Metinvest was automatically assigned because all the charters had similar clause 18 wordings in. The fact that it didn't refer to hire in the head charter was fatal for the hire, but nothing else. So you're getting not only rights, but someone else's right to intercept. Bill of lading freight, um, the old decision of the Spiros Seas stands good. Um, and again, there are certain rules on that. It's all about timely notice, but you've you are the owner, you're a party to the bill of lading, you can claim from the shipper. There's the bell game. Um, the, I think another way in which I'll try to sell the Lian as a useful tool is that the notice requirements were challenged by the party that didn't want to pay there and uh, we, saw, we can see some tolerance. You can look at the slide there. In particular, one of the attacks was that there was no specified amount or the amount was incorrect, but the judge held this didn't matter. And if you've ever had to spend ages and, and nervous moments drafting withdrawal notices where the rigors imposed are very uh, strict, the Lear notice, I would suggest, is, is a more tolerant regime. Um, quickly now, the... The risk for the charterer, once he receives this notice, is that if he pays to um, the, so the sub-charterer pays to the charterer, um, after receiving the notice, he might well have to pay again. I mentioned earlier on potential traps, and like all of these things, what you have to do is to think in advance. Um, a challenge is the language of the clause, that's the sub-freight, sub-hire point. Uh, registration under English law, if we say this is an assignment, then it's probably a charge on the property of the company. If it's an English law or a company with similar law to England, then which carries under English law, you have to register within 21 days. It's suggested in the commentaries on this that if a case came before an English court where the foreign company had similar law to England, um, the same requirements would uh, probably be um, required, or observa observation with the same requirements would be required. So, I'm well over time now, and I'll go very quickly. Disputes, when you're determining the disputes, um, bear in mind that you might, there are, under the head charter, the dispute might be the existence of Leon rights. Once you get past that, you're actually having a separate dispute under the sub-charter for the assigned claim. So it might well be, unless you can find a way to court, you've condemned yourself to two arbitrations. Um, we touched on insolvency with some of the earlier um, provisions. I would say another feature or theme here is that um, the cases so far on the Leon have been quite resilient to the recognition of foreign insolvencies under the cross-border insolvency regulations. And the case I've given you there is Costco um, against Armada, following the liquidation of Armada, where the court recognized that the proper place to determine, what I say, the first issue, the existence of the Leon, was not liquidation in Switzerland, but the London arbitration. Summary and practical tips. From an owner's point of view, think in advance. Um, the bullet points I've given you there are taken from the BIMCO Leon clause. The obvious thing is to extend freights beyond into higher, uh, and the wording in BIMCO includes under any subcharters. Um, Leon on bunkers, uh, I think you might have issues if you try to enforce that, but make the clause as wide as possible. If there's a registration issue, and I'm not talking about the old Slavenberg system for ship financiers, deal with it at the outset. If part of your security is a long-term charter, and with that comes the right in the charter's default to go beyond it, then I would suggest that um, uh, working out where the company is, the charter, 
is uh, incorporated and what its rules on registration is time well spent. The other points are self-evident. The cases do turn on timely service of effective notices, both whether you're intercepting bill of lading freight, which is actually an owner's right of interception, not the lien, or the lien. Priorities are determined by the time you receive the notice. Therefore, make sure you also send it to the proper parties. If there are agents involved, make sure they're the right agents, not ship owners' agents you think are collecting uh, freight for the charters. There are issues on deductions, they're not for now. The forum for disputes could be challenging, pragmatic solutions in escrow. These are messy cases. If you look at it from the charterer's perspective or the innocent payer in a chain, there are some real headaches. There is, uh, although it's essentially quite straightforward in principle to get these rights, uh, I'm not suggesting for one moment that you're going to have an easy ride uh, or if you're caught in this mess, that it's not a headache. That's a long overrun. You've been very patient. Thank you very much indeed.